water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Water is what keeps us alive. We're actually mostly made out of water. Aside from food and true acceptance from your parents, water is essential to our health and happiness. I don't know if all of you are aware, but we got a lot more water than land. The name Blue Planet comes from the fact that 75% of our planet is water. However, 97.5% of that water is salt. You know what that means? Only 2.5% of our water can be consumed. Of course, despite this, we use 10 billion tons of fresh water worldwide every day. And you'd think, oh, we're never going to run out. Unfortunately, yes, that's exactly what will happen. Even with all these big numbers, 771 million people or 1 in 10 don't have clean water and 1.7 billion people or 1 in 4 don't have a toilet. This is what your parents are referring to when they say some people have it much worse. Did you know how many diseases actually come from the lack of clean water? Almost 1 million people die yearly from water sanitation and hygiene diseases. If infrastructure was better, these deaths might not happen. Every two minutes, a child under the age of five dies from an illness caused by water. Access to clean water and toilets can improve your health and reduce disease transmission. And I know everything sounds negative, but that's why we're here today. Let's talk about a solution that has just been made. So put two and two together, and easier access to needy populations will result in fewer babies and mothers dying. It means that people lift and carry water less often and with less weight, relieving pressure on the body causing less strain. Because of the current global health crisis, it is more important than ever to be able to get clean water. To avoid a humanitarian crisis, we have to have a change in the system, or create a new system, right? All of this could soon change, because MIT has made a portable desalination unit that weighs less than 10 kilograms. You no longer need a big and expensive desalination plant. About a cup of salt is in every gallon of water in the ocean, but thanks to this, it could also be the other way around. In comparison, the Atlantic Ocean has more salt than the Pacific Ocean. Most of the sodium chloride in table salt comes from seawater. Don Juan Pond is a lake in Antarctica about the size of a football field. It has the saltiest water on Earth. The salt in Lake Don Juan is more than 40%, which is more than any other lake in the world. The Great Salt Lake salinity ranges from about 5% to 27%, but the Dead Seas is shockingly high at 34%. All things considered, the world's oceans have an average salinity of 3.5%. Yes, none can be as sour as your ex, but you get the idea. This device, which is about the size of a briefcase, is powered by a portable solar panel that costs about $50 and uses less power than a cell phone charger. Most people think machines can make their water. This complicated system is hidden from common knowledge, but can be turned on with a button. This life-changing system cleans water with electricity instead of pressure, which is how most portable desalination units work. When filters don't need to be changed as often, they are easier to take care of. This means that the team could be put somewhere where it's hard to get supplies like a desert island or a ship at sea. People who had to leave their homes because of natural disasters or long-term military operations could also benefit from this. We reached our goal after 10 years of hard work and teamwork. Professor Zhong Yun Huan knows a lot about removing salt from water. He works at the University of Southern California in electrical and computer engineering and biological engineering departments. He teaches at the university and does research in an electronics lab simultaneously. Han thought that all of the improvements in a box and the successful ocean demonstration were really important and rewarding. A lot of research has been done on the physical side of how different desalination processes work. About 352 quadrillion billion gallons of water are in the world's oceans. If this machine could remove the salt from all that water, we could use it to give millions of people water. Imagine if all the lives that could change. For all of those who want to know the technicals, let's take it back a little. It all started more than 10 years ago when they used Han and his colleagues' important work on ion concentration polarization. For the ICP method, membranes are used instead of water to line the channel, which is then put in an electric field. Salt molecules, bacteria, and viruses are all turned away by membranes because they all have similar electrical charges. Due to the high density of seawater, there is a lot of life and activity in a small space. There could be thousands of microbes and pathogens that could be harmful. This area has many kinds of marine life, such as fish eggs, baby crabs, plankton, and tiny worms. Water can now freely flow that the blockages have been removed and the pipe has been cleaned. The low pressure pump in an ICP makes it very effective, but ICP might be unable to get rid of all of the salt built up at the bottom of the channel. Electrodialysis was also used to get rid of any of the salt that was left. Yun and Kang used ML to find the best way to set up an ICP and electrodialysis. For the best possible setup, it is suggested to use six ICP modules in the first stage, three in the second stage and one in the electrodialysis stage. Because of this, we could keep the self-cleaning process going while using less power. 
Yun says that switching the polarity of the electric field is all it takes to get charged particles off the ion exchange membrane. The ICP and electrodialysis modules were shrunk and stacked to use less power and be small enough to fit inside a handheld device. Researchers made the device easy to use by adding a button that starts the desalination and purification processes. The user will be told if the salinity and number of particles in the water are within the system's limits. Also, a smartphone app lets the device be controlled from far away, showing how much power it uses and how salty the water is in real time. After a lot of testing in a lab with different types of salty and cloudy water, the device was tested at Boston's Carson Beach. Yun and Quan left the container on the beach and used the feeding tube to lower it into the water. The machine could fill up a single-use plastic cup with potable water twice at that time. When it first came out, it was a huge hit with the public. Han says the team's success is largely due to the fact that they are always willing to make small changes. With the device, there were 10 times as few solids in the water. This made the water meet or go above the standard set by the World Health Organization. Their model can make 0.3 liters of water per hour and uses 20 watts of power per liter. Yun said, right now we are putting in a lot of work to figure out how to increase that production rate. Han said that it took a lot of work to make a portable system easy for everyone to use. Yun wants to sell the technology after he has improved how it works, how much power it uses and how quickly it works. Han wants to use the knowledge of water quality he's gained in the lab over the past 10 years to solve problems in the real world, like the need for better ways to find contaminants in drinking water. We have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. This project is very interesting and I'm proud of what we've done so far. With every new discovery, we get closer to a time when it's easy to find clean water everywhere. It's important to remember that every breath you take contains some water. On hot, muggy days, the air is thick and sticky because there is a lot of moisture. Water generators, also called water makers, get their water from the moisture in the air. There are two main types of things they do. The most common kind of works like a normal air conditioner or similar devices. To cool the air, refrigerant is moved through coils. When the relative humidity of cool air is higher than that of the surrounding air, condensation happens and the extra water is removed. The goal of a water generator is not to keep a building at a constant temperature. When condensation is collected, it is filtered and put in a reservoir unit until it is needed. The reclaimed water goes through several stages of filtration to get rid of bacteria or other microorganisms that may have gotten into the air. When water has been in a reservoir for more than a day, it goes through a second filtration process to ensure it is still safe to drink. Most modern homes have water generators that work in the same way. This kind of technology is well known and simple to understand. It is used in air conditioners, refrigerators and dehumidifiers to control temperature and humidity. Even though it's useful, it could use too much power. In cooling style, water generators, compressed refrigerant and other parts like compressor, condenser, pump and fan are used to move water. People have said that some home water generators use as much energy as a desktop computer or a space heater. Chemical water extraction is also used a lot in the military and in business because it can be scaled up. Salts are used in many different ways in chemistry. The desiccant properties of natural salt allow it to soak up and store water from the air. Desiccant waters use salt and chemicals to pull moisture out of the air and turn it into water, which can then be collected. Salt is left out to soak and hot water is added to the mixture. Before the condensed steam is used, it goes through several stages of filtration. You can use a vacuum to lower the point water boils, saving energy. When compared to other practical ways to get water from the air, the fact that desiccants can be used saves a lot of energy. Atmospheric water generators pull water out of the air and filter it to eliminate dust and bacteria, making it safe to drink. By the time it's done, all harmful substances will have been taken out of the water, making it safe to drink. Atmospheric water generators are a safe and reliable way to get water in places where there isn't enough potable water or where the water has been spoiled. People might drink less bottled water or stop drinking it altogether. Only in certain climates do atmospheric water generators work. For it to work as planned, the following must be true. The best thing would be if the temperature outside was above freezing. Also, the relative humidity needs to be above a certain level. The range of 32 to 40% depends greatly on the manufacturer and how the oil was extracted. There are many ways to deal with the 353 quintillion tons of salt water that needs to be cleaned. Will people find a clear answer in the next few years? Tell us in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to get more like it.